Good morning, everyone. It's good to be with you this morning. I know this is the week after Thanksgiving and everyone is slowing down trying to figure out what did I do last Thursday, which is about a week ago. I know we've had Thanksgiving, we've had Black Friday, we've had Cyber Monday, Giving Tuesday, and all of those things have come and gone, yet all of them point us to what's happening next, and that is Christmas. Christmas is coming in 24 days. Now, how do those three point us to Christmas? Well, first of all, is the whole idea of giving thanks. We give thanks for what God has done in the series we're in this week is what do I have thank give what do I have to give thanks for? And the idea there is that we all have things to give thanks for, the intangible things, the things that the Father has given us. We forget. That's why we're looking at Psalm 105. Then there's Black Friday. All the sales and all the things that go on. I know it began in October. But again, the idea there is we begin to think about the gifts and things that we can give to others. And of course, those sales that we can use for ourselves. But again, the idea there is, what am I willing to give to someone else that will bless them? Whether there's a check sent to one of the many nonprofits or Christian organizations around or personal things that we buy for our loved ones. Again, the idea there is gifts. And then, of course, there's Cyber Monday, when, of course, we try to do it again. What is the best deal, best sale that I can get? Again, the idea there is I am giving. Because Thanksgiving is giving thanks. And the idea there is as we bless people with gifts is that we're blessing them and giving thanks to them for the Father. And those little intangible things and blessings that we give them. And then there's Giving Tuesday. And Giving Tuesday, again, is the idea that I am giving to someone that they may be supported, they may, they may know and understand the love of God. So we as Christians get to do that. We get to give to support different causes, different things that are extensions of ourselves into the kingdom of God. Whether they're kingdom things or not, we're still extending ourselves in the king, into the kingdom of God because we, were, we are reminded that we're all God's children and that he loves us all. And so whether it's some organization that doesn't wear the Christian banner or, or the Judeo-Christian banner, it's okay. You're giving in the name of Jesus. Because remember, Jesus asked that question, what did you do for the least of these? And many of us are surrounded by many folks who are the least of these. But let's go to our scripture, because again, today we are we have things to be thankful for. And let me just read Psalm 105, verses 1 to 7 for you. This is a remedy. It says this, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Make known his deeds amongst the people. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Speak of his wonders. Glory in his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his wonders and which he has done, his marvels and the judgments uttered by his mouth. O seed of Abraham, his servant. O sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God, and his judgments are in all the earth. Now, what do we have to be thankful for here? Oh, it's found in verses four and five. It's very, very simple. We seek the Lord in three different ways. We have a God who says, seek me. I want to be found. Be thankful. Be thankful. There's many times in scripture where God mocks all these other so-called gods. You know, the trees and the woods and the statues and all those. He says, do they walk? Do they talk? Can they speak to you? One of my favorite episodes in scripture is Elijah. Or Elijah, I get the two confused. Forgive me. He's on Mark Carmel, and he's fighting against the prophets of Baal. And he says, call down fire from him. Go ahead, go ahead. And he says, hey, is your God on vacation? Hey, is your God out to lunch? Is he asleep? Call him louder. People go through all the gyrations. No answer. He calls, the prophet of God calls upon the Lord his God. 
and fire rains down from heaven. We have a God who wants to be found, seek his presence, because in his presence, we find leadership, we find hope, we find blessing, we find joy, we find peace. And if we find peace, we find rest. The second one is seek his strength. Paul helps us there in Ephesians 6.10. Be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Let the Father speak mightily into you. Because we often need strength. We are weak. We can't last. Yet the Father says, rely on my strength. One of my favorite illustrations of that is when I used to lift weights. And you'd get under the bar and you you put the heavy weights on and you're trying to push the weight down, you let the weight fall down, and then you have to push it up. Well, there are times when you need help there, pushing it up. And so someone comes and spots you. That's the idea. That you're not just relying on your own strength. You're relying on the Father's strength to see you through. Here's the third one. Seek his face continually. We forget that. Because when we seek his face continually, there is satisfaction. There is completeness. We begin to understand what the Father is doing in our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Speak there. Let him seek his face continually. Don't forget to pray. At home in my office, there's a wonderful plaque, and I've mentioned this before. It says, don't forget to pray today. Because God didn't forget to wake you up this morning. What incredible words for us that we understand and know that the Father has not forgotten about us. Seek his face continually. Seek his presence. Leadership, blessing, joy, peace, rest. Seek his strength that you may walk in the strength of the Lord and not our own weakness, not our own fleshliness. There are many times when you are attacked and our flesh says, oh, you can do this. No one cares. No one knows. Seek the Father's presence in those times because then you have the strength to overcome. You have the strength to obey. There's an old song, Trust and Obey. There is no other way. Why? Because again, we trust the Father and walk in His strength. Then here's the next one, verse 5. We remember what God has done. Now, the way the verse reads, it says, remember his wonders, which he has done, his marvels and the judgments uttered by his mouth. That's a twofold for us. How's that a twofold? Well, the first one is, remember what God has done in your life. Now, the first thing we always want to run to is deliverances. And many of us say, I don't have some major deliverance. You know, that's fun. One of my, one of my dear friends says, then you have a a salvation of safety God kept you from. Others of us do have testimonies of deliverance, but remember what the Father has done in a healing and an unexpected blessing and the way that he has anointed you and blessed you recently. Think there. Remember what God has done because we have short memories. We forget stuff. We move on to the next thing. Sometimes I think our spiritual lives are like TV episodes, meaning that in modern TV, the, ap the average episode is not 30 minutes. You take away the commercials, you're down to about 20, 22 minutes. And that 20, 22 minutes is spliced up with two or three minutes worth of commercials. That means our attention span is very short. TV has done that to us. Sometimes our spiritual attention span is the same way, very short, because we forget. So remember, number one. Number two, marvel at the judgments he's uttered by his mouth. God's spoken word to you. What has the Father said to you through his word, through prayer? Let the Father speak to you. Lord, as I lay down to sleep tonight, Lord, speak to my heart, my unconscious mind, that, Lord, I may know you. Lord, speak into me today. Lord, as I read your word. Lord, as I pray today. Lord, help me to hear and know you. That, Father, you are there with me. The words of his mouth. Remember what Isaiah says? He says this. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord, the word that the Lord speaks, will last forever. 
He then also adds another promise. God says, the words that I've uttered from my mouth will not come back without accomplishing the things I want them to do. Remember what God has done. Call to mind what he said. And then remember his word to you. Lord Jesus, we bless you and thank you for today. And thank you. That Lord, you're the God who wants to be found. Thank you that we can seek you continually. And that, Father, we remember the things you've said and done in our lives. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Be blessed today, my dear brothers and sisters.